All right. In this second example for chapter 8, we're going to see a situation where we know one of the final velocities, but we don't know the other one. So in the same way that we want to handle almost every problem that we ever encounter, we start with a picture of the situation. So we can start by saying, all right, this block here, that's four kilograms, is moving to the right at four meters per second. And at the end of the problem, after the collision, we see that it's going to be moving to the left at three meters per second. Okay, now that mass we can call mass one. So mass one is four kilograms. The initial velocity for mass one is to the right, positive four meters per second. And the final velocity for mass one, we know what it is, it's to the left, negative three meters per second. For our other object, we have a five kilogram block that is moving to the left at seven meters per second. And after the problem, we don't know what that five kilogram block is gonna be doing, which way it's gonna be moving or what it's gonna be um, doing in general. So the initial velocity of that five kilogram block is to the left, negative seven meters per second. And the final velocity is unknown. That's our goal. Now, a couple of notes. First of all, I said in the initial example video that the most common mistake students make is we don't put those negative signs in that will completely change the problem and all of a sudden you have a different situation where the block is moving in the opposite direction. Make sure that out of everything we do in chapter eight, that's one of the most important things to be aware of and to double check in any problem. The other thing I wanna point out is that our standard problem solving technique is very useful here. We draw a picture, step one. We make a list of the given information, step two. It's all nice and laid out for us every chapter eight problem. We identify the unknown. In this example, we have a single unknown. In the previous example, there were two different final velocities that we didn't know, but because they stuck, to get, stuck together, it was only one total unknown. Step four in our standard problem solving technique from the book is that we figure out what tool we're gonna use. This is a collision, and there is one tool that always has to be used in every single collision we do, and that's the momentum conservation equation. So M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. Two final. Okay. So step one, picture. Step two, given information. Step three, unknown. Step four, equation. This process is one that if we look at the board, by the, by the end of this problem, if we look at the board, half of the process is set up. We haven't used our equation yet. We haven't done any algebra. This is the physics that we care about. The main physics in this problem is recognizing the direction has meaning and being aware that collisions will always mean that we have to use the momentum conservation equation. Okay, so now we can plug stuff in, that's step five. So we have four times positive four. We have five times negative seven. We have four times negative three. And we have five times our unknown V2 final. Okay, so we have 16 minus 35 equals negative 12 plus 5v2 final. All right, we're going to add 12 to both sides so that in our calculators we can do 16 minus 35 
plus 12. And on the left here, we will get a total of negative 7. And on the right, this canceled out. All we have left is 5v2f. So we'll divide both sides by 5 so that we can get our final velocity is negative 7 fifths or negative 1.4 meters per second. Okay, so again, looking at this problem, if we look at the entire thing, these early chapter 8 problems are not really complex algebra. The amount of math that we had here, once we plugged in numbers, we had to add something to both sides, we had to divide something on both sides, and then we were done. The reason that these chapter 8 problems early on can be difficult is if we are not using the correct signs, we will get a drastically incorrect answer. Now let's look at this velocity and think about if it makes sense to us or not, because step six of our standard problem solving technique is making sure that our answer seems reasonable. These two blocks were moving towards each other. A negative velocity here means this five kilogram block is still moving to the left. We might not have necessarily expected that, but let's look back at our starting situation. The bigger mass was also moving with the bigger speed. It has a lot more momentum. It is harder to stop than the one with less momentum. That's kind of, if we go back to the original introduction introduction video, that's what momentum really is, how hard it is to stop something moving. And so this five kilogram block, the two possibilities, and depending on the masses and speeds involved, the two possibilities are that it continues in the same direction, but it must slow down, or it can bounce back the opposite direction. We will see situations where those two different possibilities um, are available to us. Sometimes in our assignments and assessments, it will bounce. Sometimes it will continue moving. But the one thing that we can be sure of is if we look at this starting situation, if we end up with a negative number, it must be a bigger, neg uh, smaller negative number than seven. It cannot be a bigger number. It can't speed up in the same direction it was going. That's one thing that we can very comfortably rule out. All right, so this example, you can always rewatch it whenever you need to, uh, and it's a standard um, problem type where the big key things to be aware of are the signs and checking to make sure that number seems reasonable to us at the end. All right, I will see you in the next one.